first heard about the Geek many years ago, probably over 25 years ago. It was supposed to be some kind of special vapor carburetor that would really increase your gas mileage. And you can still find many videos about it and stories online. I'd always wondered if there was actually anything to that. You know, you hear stories or you see videos of people running small engines on crude oil mixed with salt water, soda pop, beer. People would mix all kinds of crazy liquids together with a little bit of gasoline and put it through a bubbler trying to vaporize it. Then they'd take the vapors that they got out of this bubbler and put it through some piping that was heated from the exhaust that was a GEET reactor. And then after it passed through there, they would take those special vapors now out of the top of the GEET, their GEET gas, and they'd run it back through the engine to run the engine on it. And it was supposed to be really clean and efficient and last for hours and hours on just a tiny bit of this uh, mixture. And that's the kind of videos you can find on YouTube yet. And there's all kinds of stories and talks given about the GEET reactor and the GEET gas and, and how it's supposed to work. These little short demos went on for years and years, mostly it's like maybe 10 years ago, but lately you can't really find anything recent on it anymore. I don't know if they just gave up. I know the Paul Pantone died, so maybe that kind of ended the research. I'm not sure, but it kind of just kind of died and faded away. And there's all kinds of stories out there how this is a big scam or it's a conspiracy theory. Oil companies and the government, they're suppressing it. You can find all kinds of stuff about it. Anyway, it seems like the research just kind of stopped on it. I usually don't work on anyone else's ideas, but now that I have my downwick carburetor that creates a lot of good gasoline vapors, I thought this might be a good opportunity to run it through a GEET reactor of some kind to see if anything happens, if I could stretch out the gasoline anymore. So that's what I went about to do. The structure of this uh, GEET reactor is basically a counterflow heat exchanger. There's piping for the engine exhaust to go down and out. And inside that piping is another pipe that goes all the way through. So the engine hot ex engine exhaust will work its way down, exchanging its heat with this inner pipe and then the fuel vapors that are cooler will be picking up some of that heat as they pass through. What's different with this counterflow heat exchanger is that inside the inner pipe is an iron rod and the fuel vapors work their way past that and swirl and spin and turn and they really pick up a lot of speed they say and when it gets to the top it forms a plasma breaking down the molecules and it exit as a special geek gas is what they call it. I couldn't find any exact plans on, and dimensions about how this is supposed to be built. So just viewing whatever videos I could find and listen to people talk, I came up with my own. I think it's pretty close to what the other experimenters were doing. So in order for me to fit this onto my engine now, I had to do some changing and rearranging in order to fit this GEET reactor on. So that's what I'm going to go over right now. I'm making a few new parts for my vapor run engine. First of all, i am got myself a different... Uh, needle valve. It's got a nice handle on there. Hopefully I'll be able to adjust that gas a little bit more. This is the old one. And how I put this together so I can get it down inside past the air intake is that I took a, a compression fitting like this one. This is a eighth inch pipe fitting to a quarter inch compression. And I took this end here and I threaded that one for eighth inch pipe two. And then I'm able to stick a quarter inch tube in there and I soldered that in there to hold it. So now I got a eighth inch pipe thread here and here. And then this will be able to fit right in past there. This is half inch to eighth inch pipe thread. That'll fit right in there. 
to fit past that air intake tube. That's all I did there. That'll fit in that half inch fitting. Then my pipe a little straighter. The next part I'm making is a flame arrester. I'm making it out of a three quarter inch coupling and two three quarter and half inch bushings. And I put some screens across inside here. There's two in each of these, and I have one inside this coupling. It was just made with some uh, stainless steel mesh that I had and I just cut it out with the tin snips and fit it in there. Put a little JB weld on there to hold them and then I'll just assemble these together and that'll be a flame arrester. The flames won't, won't be able to pass through these screens. For the geek parts, this is what they call the fuel rod. This is just half inch steel rod. And what I how I made this is I put it in a drill and I spun it while I had this nose part up against a grinder wheel going. And I was able to form that into the bullet point. And on the back side I just I drilled that out a little bit. And I guess that's supposed to be the form that works. And for the inside tube of the GEET reactor, I use this straight wall steel tubing. This is 5 ace OD 9 16 ID. And this will set right inside there and do the magic. This, this tubing here is actually the same size as half inch copper tubing, except it's steel. I guess it needs to be magnetic, so this is what I went with. This is starting to look a little complicated, so I'm going to go over everything and try to explain it a little. I'll start over here with this uh, little gas tank I got that's marked out in milliliters. And what I do when I'm making a test run, I'll get the engine running steady. And when it gets to the 50 milliliter mark, I'll start the timer. And then I'll stop it when it gets to the 20 milliliter mark. Then I got something to compare to on each uh, test run. But what I do when I'm first starting the engine when it's cold, I'm still using the standard carburetor. It has a shutoff valve right here, and this is a choke. So I start it with the standard carburetor because the vapor carburetor just will not start the engine when it's cold. It'll start it after it's been running a little bit and warmed up, but to first start it when it's cold, I'm still using the standard carburetor. And once it's warmed up, I shut off the fuel here, and it'll run a little bit until the float bowl is empty, and then I can switch over to the vapor carburetor. And when I do that... I have my new little needle valve here. What I do, I just crack that open just a little bit to get the fuel flowing down through here. And this is that same heat exchanger I made. And it brings in warm air heated from the exhaust down into the vapor curb here. It mixes with the gas and it evaporates down through the center where I have all those filter papers and then back up and out. These two things right here are swing check valves. This one I put here so when the engine is off no vapors can escape back out to the exhaust. This one I put in place as a precaution in case there's a backfire or some kind of back pressure I didn't want going into the jar that might cause it to break. So that's just a precaution. And the vapors will go through this same plastic hose and now this valve here will be acting like a throttle.
And this is that uh, flame arrestor that I made. And then the vapors will go up the inside tube of the geet. And that rod will center itself right in here, they say, because of the magnetic field. And will be spinning very fast. And this is where it's supposed to change into a plasma, a plasma gas, and break apart all the molecules. And that geek gas, is what they call it, would travel down to the intake manifold to run the engine. And one thing I noticed about this pipe right here, it does get pretty hot. Like I've seen it up to maybe 220 degrees at the intake manifold. And over here, we have the exhaust traveling down through these geet pipes and out to that same muffler. Now with this geet, they say you need a, a vacuum at the bottom of the geet. So that's why I'm using this valve right here. Before, if it's right there, it's free flowing right through this vapor carb. But when it's right here, it restricts it so there will be a greater vacuum over here than over here in the jar. There's really not hardly any vacuum here. It's just sucking a little bit. And I tried this in a couple different configurations with the governor hooked up and without it hooked up. Because this is the, the throttle right here on the carburetor. The governor operates the throttle. When the carburetor throttle is in the wide open position, full engine vacuum is available down to the geet. But I need to have this valve open at least this much in order to get the vapors going through there. And I noticed that there's no difference in engine performance whether the governor is hooked up or not, or I'm using this as full throttle or not. It still operates the same. So I had just been leaving the governor hooked up, but I tried it both ways and I haven't seen any difference in performance, even if this throttle here is closed a little bit. And this is where that geet rod is, or fuel rod, or whatever you want to call it. it sits right up in there. This is just a regular plug, half inch plug. And this is just a piece of brass wire I bent around to push this rod up in there. And there's a rod. It sits in there, and I push it up in there. And after it's running, it's supposed to raise up, they say, and center itself in that pipe there. When I did the test runs through the geet, I did pick up an average of 12 seconds longer on that 750 watt load than I did just with the downwith carburetor without the geet. And that's in the best conditions. And the best conditions are when the generator engine is fully warmed up and the downwick carburetor is measuring about 80 some degrees inside on the filter papers. And that would calculate out to be a 61% gain in runtime over that of the, just the standard carburetor. I'll put some of those test runs at the end of this video if you want to stick around for that. I'm not sure what accounts for the gains. I can't say that I'm generating any of that special geek gas. It could be just vaporizing any droplets that are left after the downwick carburetor, and that's picking up a little bit of a gain. I'm, I don't know. Or it could be that the engine is running a little bit leaner. I noticed around the pipes right out of the exhaust manifold that they were running a little bit hotter, but it wasn't running hotter around the spark plug or the muffler either. The muffler was still, it's actually a little bit cooler than when I was running it with the standard carburetor through there. And I think you need an exhaust gas analyzer to figure out exactly what's going on there. One thing that I can confirm is that that geet rod picked up that special magnetic characteristic that the other researchers noticed. It's very bizarre, it's unexplained. I'll make a separate video just on that because something did happen there that's a little bit special and I can't wrap my head around it. So I'm gonna make a special video just on that. Well, I'd like to thank those who watched this video and please share it with your friends. And if you wanna stick around, I'll play those test runs that I did earlier.